So, it's your 10th birthday. You're just about to get your very first Pokemon and set off on a grand journey that many Pokemon trainers go through, right before saving the world and becoming the champion. If you're familiar with the Pokemon games in any way, it's a story you're all too familiar with. In fact, the fact that your protagonist is able to save the world at the right age of 10 and youngest has been a running gag in the community for years, but the topic hasn't really been discussed in the series until recently, and the way they address it is actually quite interesting. Now, there's a reason why Pokemon hasn't addressed such a conundrum. It's just the classic Chosen One story, a popular writing trope that makes it so that only the protagonist can solve a certain problem in order to get the plot moving forward. It's a trope so popular that you're bound to see it at least once, and while some people have problems with it, the Chosen One plot is one that doesn't really need explaining, especially in a video game where the protagonist is controlled by the player's actions. Why is the kid tasked to save the world? Well, because you're the protagonist, and you, as a player, can. However, Pokemon Legends Arceus is the first mainline series game that actually gives you a reason for your Chosen One status. If you don't already know, Legends Arceus takes place in the Hisui region, basically the Sinnoh region of Generation 4 in the semi-distant past, in which humans aren't as accustomed to Pokemon as they are now. So when a dimensional rift happens in Hisui, Arceus had to find someone in the modern world who is familiar enough with Pokemon to stop such an event, and that person just so happens to be you. So it's not like the reason you are better at Pokemon than everyone else is due to some inherent specialness you have. You're a normal 15 year old. It's just that you've been transported to a time period where everyone else is less advanced at Pokemon than you, so it just looks like you're the best in comparison. Just take a look at the beginning of the game where everyone is impressed that you're able to catch three wild Pokemon, stating that no one in the Galaxy team has ever achieved such a feat. However, if you played practically any other Pokemon game, you would know that catching three wild Pokemon, especially early route ones like Bidoof, Starly, and Shinx, is one of the easiest things you could do as a trainer. So, it turns out the reason why you're so special is because you're in a world where everyone just so happens to be less advanced. But as the story unfolds, you start to realize that, even in this world, you still weren't as special as initially thought. When investigating the Coronet Highlands, you come across a strange, or strangely familiar, man named Inko. Like you, was transported to the past through a dimensional rift. Not only does his existence show that you are not special, but during a walk with him in the cave, you get to hear him talk about what few memories he does have during his own dimension, as well as some experiences he had being an outsider in this dimension. These discussions of his are incredibly important, as it shows the types of thoughts someone in your position may have, but cannot be expressed by the player as they are a blank slate who cannot express anything. I think this element of Legends Arceus not only further expands on the concept of dimension travel, but it also comforts the player in that they are not the only person having to go through the same struggles and turmoil you do. If you're a veteran Pokemon fan, especially from the 5th generation, you would actually know that Ingo is a pre-existing character in black and white, being one of two leaders of the battle subway, a piece of side content in the game. While it seems like any old character could work in this role, I actually believe Ingo was the perfect choice for multiple reasons. The first and most obvious reason is that Ingo isn't just Ingo. Like I said, he's only one of two Battle Subway leaders alongside his brother Emmy. These two are a certified duo, they have matching outfits, matching poses, you just can't separate one from the other. So when you only see one of the two brothers, something feels off. This feeling of incompletion you get when only saying Ingo perfectly reflects his amnesia and the feeling that his memories feel incomplete as well. And this is only heightened when you realize which particular region he's from. If you don't know, Generation 5 was Game Freak's attempts to reboot the franchise in many ways, and this caused the first games in Unova to have its Pokedex consist entirely of Unovan Pokemon, meaning that Pokemon from Generations 1 through 4 were completely uncatchable until the post game. Meanwhile, the Hisui region has nothing but Pokemon from these generations if you don't count the Hisuian forms. This means that not only is Hisui completely foreign to Ingo, all the Pokemon are foreign to him as well, and the only ones that resemble what he knows are completely different to what he's used to. There's also the fact that Ingo and Emmett are relatively obscure characters in the games. The Battle Subway is completely optional, meaning that even people who've played Black and White may not remember these two. I really like this because it makes Ingo's addition to the game feel like something both new and experienced players can equally enjoy. New players can relate to someone who is sent to Hisui like them, 
and older players can appreciate this easter egg shading light on such an underrated character. Okay, 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 I think I went on a little tangent with Ingo there, but I feel like talking about him still enhances the game's chosen one story. You know what else enhances the game's chosen one story? Now that, man, my friends, is how you do a transition. Okay, now that I've completely butchered any cohesion that this video had, I'll explain that Pokemon Legends Arceus has a post game in which you gather up all of Arceus' 18 plays by beating up mythical Pokemon and stuff. Once you collect all of them, you realize that Bolo is evil and- OH GOD, PLEASE PUT THAT BACK ON, YOU LOOK AWFUL, YOUR GINCHENKO COSPLAY ISN'T COOL, IT JUST MAKES YOU LOOK DUMB- And after you're forced to battle him, he goes on a little rant about how he doesn't understand why Arceus chose the player. He went through all this effort in order to meet up with Arceus, but even with all that, Arceus chooses some 15 year old who just so happens to live in a world that understood Pokemon more. He even contemplates that the sole reason the player was sent here was just to spite him. The scene is honestly so interesting that it caused me to make this very video. Having a character have an existential crisis about not being the main character of their own story is something I'd imagine Undertale to do, not Pokemon. I think this part of Volo's character is an incredibly interesting and incredibly tragic deconstruction of the Chosen One trope. Volo is studied so much, and the player wouldn't have even found Orpheus without him. But none of that matters when he's not the Chosen One. This game gets even sadder when Volo is defeated and hands over the last play. He seems so close to understanding his place, but then he just can't accept the reality that he lives in, that our character, a mere child who has only been in this world for a couple days, has achieved something that he's been working to achieve for years. Volo then vows that he will beat Arceus someday, but the sad thing is, we all know he won't. No matter how hard he studies, no matter how hard he searches, Volo will never be Arceus. Because he isn't the chosen one. Because he isn't the protagonist. Volo will always be just a side character, and extra the real chosen one has to get past in order to achieve their goal. So that's the end of this little Pokemon video. What do you think about it? Honestly, I'm a really big fan of Pokemon, so if you want to see more things like this, leave a comment below. Are there any other franchises you want to see me discuss? Also leave a comment below. You know what? Just leave a comment in general. I'm a big fan of comments. Oh, and uh, make sure to like this video as well. That makes the video more visible and more likely to get recommended on. Anyway, I'm Wins Media, and I'll see you later.